And so here we go. Welcome to the Augur 8 Knot Working Group for April 1st, 2024. Uh, no April Fool's jokes, please. But, you know, if you need it, go ahead. Um, I'll see if Gary comes back for the Redis update. And the question I had on design is, Lammy, you've presented some designs uh, up to this point, and I thought it would be useful to talk about what the roadmap for implementing some of them might look like. And I know, Kelly, that does involve your team, but it could also involve um, other open source contributions. And I, I don't know if, uh, Lamy, if, if you have thoughts on if there's anyone in Chaos Africa who is interested in implementing some of the design work that you've done, or if uh, maybe, Kelly, we want to go over it again and uh, yeah. refine it. My understanding is that we still had a few more weeks of iteration that we were going to have with LOM. Like, at least how I understood last week's meeting was that there was a couple more weeks of iteration that we were planning on going through for the design. And then, and how I viewed it is that once we have, like, a where you agree on the design, trying to group the um, design into a couple of, I kind of view it as three phases, but, like, We'll figure out what, how everyone views it. I mean, like, these are phase one changes, things that all need to happen at the same time to like get to this new design structure, and then to the, and then figure out what that second level, and then probably the third level of these are the things that would be super nice, um, but we'll get there when we get there type things. Um, the one thing that we like pretty much as James and I would need to do once that design is like, once we agree on that design, then the, I would say the next steps for James and I would be to be, to go over, okay, from our technical architecture, what needs to change mm -hmm. to be able to um, work with it or like to be able to implement it. Cause like for context, having that um, homepage, which I think is, great and what we need to be doing that does change pretty much how the entire app is structured um and so we need to figure out that side of things but i do think it's worth worth at least like if there are people that we can start talking to in chaos africa or otherwise about this that would be good because i think those people would probably need to do some education work around like dash and the application itself before they were able to do any work on it anyways. Yeah, and um, so far we have no one who has said they're interested in implementing it except Enoch. But I do know someone um, who worked on the badging, some sections of the badging websites. I, I think he might be interested. So I'm, I'll just tell him. Okay. Okay, that would be great. Do you have any updates on the design right now, Lami, since uh, we talked last a couple weeks ago? Yeah, um, you can follow me. Yeah, let me, um, why don't I let you share? Can you share? I'll stop my share. Okay. Or, yeah, you can still do that whenever you're sharing because of the app, you can follow Lami. So then oh, you have to switch off. Right. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I could have done that. Do you want me to do that, Lami? I forgot about that feature. Uh, oh, let me Share my screen because sure. I also want to show you okay. prototypes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I worked on the dark mode. Graphs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For the repo overview page, contributions page, and the contributors page. I don't know if I should. Okay. Okay. I didn't. So, um, Kali mentioned having the graphs, um, the names of each graphs and um, visualization rather at the sidebar also. So I added that. Um, this is how it looks like. Let me see. That looks fancy. Whatever you're doing there. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> And it's is this like a Figma prototyping tool? Yes. Oh, wow. I did not realize that was a thing. That's awesome. Yeah, Figma is really cool. Okay, so while this loads, I'll just do a walkthrough of the designs themselves. This is how both pie charts look like. 
And um, unlike last week, I decided that instead of having the search bar populated analysis and repo analysis in different pages, and then having it at the top, both of them could just be on one page, and then the search bar for individual repositories can just be here. And then um, for contribution graphs, this is how they look like. So I'm trying to use a, I'm trying to stick with a particular color palette, which is what is already on, on the current website. So I'm using chaos colors now. I oh. have a lot of here. Yeah. Then I also yeah. have a questions. I'll go back to them soon. Sorry, did you want to say something? Nope, nope. I was just say, I was starting to say something to the effect of very cool using the chaos colors. Yeah, okay. Uh, so these are the graphs I have now. I'm not done with all the pages or well, three pages so far. Um, so I listed a few questions here. Oh, let me go to my comments. Okay, so I noticed that some of the graphs have like similar information, but the um this stuff here shows differently. So for um Do you, do you mean that the time zone the time ranges default to a different range or please give me a minute, sorry. Someone sure. is at my gate <laughs> trying to get I need to answer. Yeah, go ahead. Um well Lamy takes a break. Gary, I, I had a question at the top of the agenda about Redis and if you've uh had any success identifying alternatives at this juncture? Oh yeah, I mean, I think. I mean, the, like if you have a preferred one, yeah. <laughs> given that the LF specifically is uh, sponsoring Valky, I don't think it's a it's a contest that we should probably just be using Valky. For context, um, one of the main contributors, one of the core contributors to Redis that works for Amazon, on their own time was like, I'm just going to start this one called Placeholder KV. And then Amazon was like, hey, wait, we use Redis. Wouldn't it be better if it was open source? And then they started sponsoring it. And then a lot of other people started sponsoring it. And so it was like, okay, the LF is going to take it over so that all these sponsors can funnel the money to the LF anyway. So what is the number? What is the name? How do you spell the name of it again? Valky, V-A-L-K-E-Y. Yeah, but um, given that that is, I mean, I want to see how it plays out over the next month or so before we start adopting it here. Um, but I think. Yeah, we like, don't, we can't I, run in, we don't have bandwidth to run and do this right this second either. Yeah. So. So I, I'm happy to make contributions. I have some other things that I'd like to contribute, but I don't want to interrupt this fruitful discussion that we're looking at. Yeah, I think Lamy's back. Are yes, you? I'm back. Yes, right. I am. About that. Okay. Uh, so um, having the graph names here would allow users to scroll directly to whatever graph they click on. If I was to click this, it scrolls to um, where it is. Mm. Sorry, I'm out of breath. It's yeah, it's okay. You oh. probably ran to your gate and back. <laughs> Okay, so that's also down there to show how it scrolls and the um, effect of hovering on a graph and um, how selecting each of those things look like. My impression looking looking at it is that we're probably, as a practical matter, surrendering, in many cases, the amount of space available to do two graphs across. If I'm looking at these contributions, I see that you've prototyped it with one graph across. Is that a deliberate choice or just a byproduct of your screen breadth? Mm. No, no, it's, it's <clears throat> deliberate. Uh, because I think, cause... go ahead. Yeah, it's because of the sidebar. It takes mm -hmm. up a, a large portion of the screen. So having two graphs here would be so much. Yeah, and having the names of them all listed on the side, like you showed us a minute ago, I think makes it a little bit easier or a lot easier to deal with just one graph in the width. But I, uh, what do you think, Kelly? I mean, 
initially it makes sense. I'm just going to have to sit. I just think I need to sit with it a little bit since it is different than what I've seen before. Because the initial reaction is going to be, what, that's so different than what it was seeing this next to each other. And then it's like, <laughs> does that really matter? Probably not. And so I just don't, I don't have an exact opinion right now because it's just, I feel like, at least for me, anytime I see something that's so new from something I'm around every single day, I like to let it sit for a little bit before I come up with an opinion for it's not just a, a shock yeah. opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my, my thought is if we're going to use left nav, I see the width issue. And if I look at the list in this design prototype, I can scan the names of the graphs as easily or perhaps even more easily than a page full of side by side graphs. So I, I might be, it seems like well executed at least, um, whether or not that ends up being preferred, we'll see, but I, I like yeah. it. Uh, I like the execution, Lamy. And if there are any other ideas, I'm very happy to take them and work in them too. And uh, uh, is there, do you have a, like when you work as a designer in your Chaos Africa group, do you have, um, are there, like, do you have a way that you pass this off then to development teams or like the person you think might be interested? Uh, so there's no standard way. What mm -hmm. I do is create another page explaining things that are not very clear. Uh -huh. um, like interactions, expected interactions, and so on. And then tell the developer that you can check out information about the designs on this page. And then they ask questions and I answer. So there's no standard way to do it. Okay. I mean, I think in this case, uh, if, if there's a person that you can identify and that person could possibly be here next Monday or we set up a separate time if necessary, uh, then we could start talking with Callie perhaps about this, the steps of yeah. uh, working through this. I, I would say it's, I, being 100% realistic, at the very least, the first refactor that's going to be, that's going to take to get to this design, it's, it, it's probably going to need to be me or James. Is it like uh, a te the technical components of the refactor? Yeah. It's, yeah. Like are the technical components or, I mean, <clears throat> This is like we do use Dash framework, and so the portions of it that involves like changing all the attributes, they either need to be someone who's like super into learning Dash, or needs to be us too. And then whenever we're talking about, that's why I'm apt to going towards like the different phases, like of talking about the different phases, because I think that the first phase is going to be need necessary from somebody who deeply understands the framework a of a not and deeply mm -hmm. understands how dash works. Um, and which means me or James. And then once that's there, then taking on like one, Oh, here's one small piece here. Here's one small piece here. Here's one small piece there. That feels a lot more realistic for people to come in to work on. Um, because this is going to be the overall, like the first step to get here is going to be a very large one. Um, and so that's just the nature of a, of a huge redesign. Yeah, that's fair. But I guess that, that's, I guess for me, that's why I'm not like <clears throat> the trying to find people, other people to work on this. It's like, I would be great. Would like to, that's not my number one, like concern at the exact moment. Um, okay. yeah, that's fair. Lemmy, did you have a demo that you wanted to run through? Like, uh, it sounded like you had a... Uh, yeah, that was it. I just wanted to show how this helps. Oh, okay. Look right. in you had then brought up the prototyping app, I guess, at one point, but... Yes. That's what, what I'm asking about, if you wanted to... Oh, go, I'll let you drive. Go ahead, I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, um, the prototype of scrolling to each graph or two different graphs via the side nav was what I wanted to show. Okay. Okay, and um, then I discovered this. Oh, I think I've put this in the wrong place. There was an information here. Oh, here. 
Okay, this is it. So on the new contribution, new contributor by, by month visualization, we have a filter for um, year, month, and trend. And then there's also mm -hmm. one for this. I'm wondering if it's deliberate and how would it work also? Yeah, let me just open it up because I'm not really for sure. I'm not familiar with the second portion of those that, or I haven't, I just haven't looked at any of this in a long time. Um, so that, yeah. Um, personally, I would want to take that off. That's some, that's, I think it's, that's more um, archived stuff that's just still there. I wouldn't take it into account. Um, that just determines the view of how much is shown. It's like a built-in graph function that I'll be, if we're being honest, it's like something that, that I think James was really apt on early on um, that mm -hmm. I don't think really matters now. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. But I, but yeah, cause I mean, that was worked on like two years ago. It's so not too, the, the um, radio items are going to be the ones that are actually important. Mm. And um, one last thing I also wanted to take note of is, or mention rather, and we, in our first meeting, we talked about different instances of eight knots and how we want to differentiate them. I think the color of the graphs, aside from the logo that will be here, would be a good way to differentiate them. So for the other open source community not chaos they will have different colors mm -hmm. it won't be like these colors yeah i like that idea it makes sense it's also super easy to do from a coding perspective like it is a singular line you put in your um color hex values and i think this puts in a good precedent of like for chaos you use your chaos color palette for aspen you use the aspen color palette so then say if another company ends up using it and they want to make it where they can tell which one it is, then they use their company color palette or their community color palette. So I think that's a good like exactly. precedent to start. Right. Thanks. Um, I think that's all I have to show today. <clears throat> I have a few questions, but I don't think I, ha I understand <laughs> them very well. So I'll ask next week. Uh, Okay, I was about to say, I was like, if you want to talk through them, more than happy, but if you want to wait till next week, that works too. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Oh, thank you, Lamy. All right, I will take over again. So we covered uh, a little bit of the Redis update, the design updates. I just wanted to mention. Uh, I'm going to try again to kickstart some of the API development work for Augur, uh, especially since uh, after the discussion last week, there are the project viability starter metrics. And Gary, I realized I came out of last week's meeting without a deadline on uh, getting these endpoints to you, so I didn't do it last week because I didn't give myself a deadline. So uh -huh. give, me a de give me a deadline because Kelly will assert, Kelly will attest to the fact that this does help me. Sure. Um, there is not a chance that I'm going to be able to work on this probably until after I get back from LF anyway. Um, so I'll say you got till 19th. All right. So that means this week or next week. <laughs> yep. Um, this is a good time. Like, what are, Go ahead, Kelly. What's the situation with the documentation um, updates? Oh, you mean uh, documentation updates? I know we talked about a blog post too. Are you asking about documentation or blog post or both? Document just for me is just documentation okay. um, of figuring out consistency on the list and on the heels of trying to make deadlines and things like that. Um, I'm still in the same spot of more than happy to help with that. Um, and, and Kelly, you're. Your interest or your, your, I know from our discussions inside and outside this meeting that documenting the schema is very high on your list of things that need to be done. Are there, is that, I mean, 
I assume that hasn't changed, but I'm checking. Yeah, the, I would say from a auger technical perspective, that's probably the top thing on my, like that. And like, I guess this will be another side conversation of figuring out how the update of our auger instance went over the weekend. But um, that's from like a general project standpoint, that's my highest technical priority. Okay. All right, April, what is today? The first, so the sixth is, is the fifth Friday? I think so. I think so, yeah. So I'll at least get some kind of an update with some kind of a blog post moving it in a direction. I think the things that you've asked for before are schema level documentation. And I didn't meet with the Augur team last Monday because uh, their students and my college was on spring break. It affected me not at all, but uh, they took advantage of it. So I will meet with them tonight and work out a, what I really, I mean, technically, I think the only thing that we need to understand is that I don't fully understand and I want to make sure I do the right way. So for, I'm babbling. Updating the, the comments in the tables themselves is, I think, the most useful first step from. Yes. And that will pretty much allow for a tool to be able to extract that and then be able to produce the documentation of being uh, from like a table column description. And so if you have all the those comments up to date, then creating the documentation from that is pretty much a, um, a give me. I think we put in the we went over last week some of the tooling options to be able to do that. We did. We did. And I, the, so what I'd started to babble about uh, is I want to make sure I know the right way to put that documentation into Augur because we use, um, uh, gosh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, we use an ORM tool, the name of which is escaping me right now, but it's a very widely used ORM tool. So the schema is not created by a schema creation script. It's created by an ORM script now. And I just need to make sure I know where to put the, the comments for each column in that ORM yeah. script so that, that I, makes it's, sense. yeah, then that's the, because my whole career prior to this, moving everything to ORM about 18 months ago has been relational database schemas and editing those. I just have to know, I have to make sure I'm clear on where to put stuff and the logic of that in the schema creation scripts for the ORM. SQL that makes sense. Alchemy. And like brand, SQL yeah, Alchemy. Random, yeah, there's some random columns that, do, that does have descriptions. I'd say another layer of that, I guess when you're going to be going through and adding descriptions, I think that the columns that are depreciated or not populated, like in any circumstance will come to the surface. I know that like cleaning those out or whatever we want to do with them is going to be a layer two, but at least mm -hmm. if the description when you will hover over it is this is not populated, then you know to not go down bother like with it hole. yeah yeah and so, and so it's as useful as like the description of what the data would be and so okay. that'd be got it i think i think i knew all that i just i'm affirming it so that i am clear about my next step which is what i thought it was right all right anything else that anyone wants to bring up i think i think if you're as you're navigating through the chaos community if there's anyone that you run across who you think may be interested in doing API development work, we could definitely use some help on Augur with that right now. Um, but I think also the schema work we just discussed uh, will be incredibly useful and helpful for anyone trying to write APIs. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll at least poke that in the second half of this year, I'll have a lot more availability for contributing back and doing things that are like additive to the community where right now I'm still getting all of the value from using the products out so that my company will buy into the idea that I should be doing some meaningful contribution back into the project so that, you know, symbiotic yep. relationship kind of thing. So 100%. API development would 100% help me and I would be willing to, um, you know, I need these endpoints, but while I'm here, I'm going to do all of these endpoints because obviously, right. you know, they're not going to be that strict that they're going to say, only do the things that benefit us, um, or at least they wouldn't have anybody to audit that that's all I'm doing. 
Um, <laughs> and uh, well, I'll, I'll I say that people do understand Q3, Q4, I'll be a little yeah. bit more available to do that if nobody takes it. All right. That's awesome. I, the, I'll put this in there, but this is, again, like, documentation is the by far number one. But mm. the one of the features that we've discussed a little bit, but something that I'm going to become increasingly more important will be to get the topics information around the repositories um, and also figuring out how to handle the name um, collision that has be that has come from a different there's a call there's a topics column in or topic words column in Augur already that existed before github created topics um mm. that we, and we and so there i'm pretty sure there's some like sent i forget exactly how you said sean that those were populated but it was pretty much just like from like some type of like worker just pulling out information versus there being like very specific things on most repositories that tells you what topics it, it groups itself under so a lot of times if you look at like kubernetes it's going to have like cloud and all this different self and it's all self-identified and so that information around a repository is going to become increasingly more important to me as time goes on okay gary your hand is up yeah i just wanted to say uh this sounds like something that could benefit from being like in an issue because then it's easier to reference like hey this yeah, is I what know. happened and this is like where we need to fix it because then you know control f works to find a lot of the instances and then PRs and all that stuff works a little bit better. Yes, yeah, I think I, I don't remember if I have I made an issue. I, this, I could uh, have made an issue for this already. I honestly okay. have no. Either way, the point is very valid. I don't remember. Yeah, just, you know, it, it, one of those things that when you're deep in it and you know it's happening is a good time to like put it wow. down so that somebody else can chase it down later. I'm trying to be better about issues in my own project, so that jumps to mind as like, oh boy, use an issue. Yeah, my experience working with Kelly is that there probably is an issue already. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, she's mentioned this before, and I think if I go to, I'm just curious, uh, open. Hmm. Not necessarily, but my search may be false. Yeah. What was it? Names or topic names? It's topic there's a, words, there's, words. There's a, oh, there's closed. That, there's an issue that's that's um, vaguely related to it, but I, this is its own whole okay thing. Yeah, yeah okay. like it's mentioned in a different issue that I've written, but that's more about like the, uh, general ta like general table concerns, um, but not specific to this one because it's this is going to be its whole own thing. So I'll create an issue happily. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much, Thank Kelly. You. Anything uh, else, folks? Oh, go ahead, Gary. Yeah, I, I got I got just, this isn't related to the, what we just talked about. Um, sure. In the last couple of weeks, we've had uh, Redis and now SSH have meaningful oh. difficulty, um, meaning there's probably going to have to be some difference in adoption. There's probably going to be some, like, XZ and SSH are going to be looking at their policies and thinking harder about how to harden that kind of thing. And proactively as an OSPO, uh, I'd love to be able to measure this with Augur. And this is not like, hey, build this feature for me. This is like, I'm trying to brainstorm how this might work um, to capture, Jesus, sorry, capture the, um, basically a change in the main committer is how I think about it. Like it, stands out to me is perhaps uh, when maintainership changes hands and there's committers that mm -hmm. used to be very active that are no longer active. Like, Is everyone familiar with what Gary's talking about? Um, so, okay. okay. All right. Okay. Go ahead, Gary. Sorry. Just yeah, want to make sure. So, sorry. It, it would help if I give context for like the solution that I'm proposing anyway. So if we're looking at uh, the SSH and XZ specifically, um, somebody had come in and made uh, commits, and my understanding is that the main the main maintainership of the project had changed hands at that time. So there was 
like you you wouldn't necessarily be able to detect something like this with a bus factor change because it's still the same number of people making the same number of commits but it's more specifically like when a new person comes along and another person kind of swaps out as the main commit source for the project I'm wondering if there's a way we can use the data that we collect with Augur to detect when something like that happens and just like be able to warn that maybe there's going to be some change in the direction or some change in the main, the, the suitability or security of the project. Like Yeah, this is very this high in the sky. I'm trying to no. brainstorm how you might capture this. So as as I have traveled the world, I'll say just the world the last four months, this what happened with XSC is exactly the kind of intentionally introduced defect that I've been concerned about. And the way that it happened is exactly one of the ways I've been most concerned about it happening, because you have a trusted contributor who just suddenly decided to inject not only inject malicious code, but then also press like Fedora and other open source projects to implement the malicious code under the guise of some other thing that it would fix, if I'm recalling what I read about this. So Okay. what I what I, th I think we could do is I, I haven't gone so far, because I just read about this, I think Saturday, uh, I haven't gone so far as to identify what the open source repository is that this XXC, XXZ project lives in. But I think what we could do is, you know, run Augur on it and see what kinds of changes we can identify as uh, preceding the introduction of the malicious code and then search for similar patterns in other repositories. Yeah, Ars Technica is exactly the article I, I, identify, I saw Yeah, as well. I was gonna say, I was like, I think that this is actually more of a research slash blog in the first step, which I'd be happy, I... really happy to work on. Cause it's like, we, this is the, this is the symptom. Is there more generic causes that we can see in trends in different areas to show that it's going to point towards something like this happening? Cause it's like, especially with this specific scenario, at least from what I understood from Sean, it's like, This person technically was involved long term in the project and then did, like something happened with them personally to want to do this. But that's a, a very uh, like you're not going to be able to see that necessarily directly. And even if you can, I'm almost more of like, OK, what can we see at a higher repository level? Like, is there a bunch of maintainers that over time? you went from having 10 maintainers to two maintainers and whatever. And then at the very end, that maintainer ship switched right there, but there was a huge, there was a trend over time that pointed towards there being a vulnerability. And that makes me want to kind of look at, we've done like a heat map series in um, Yeah. eight knot of being like, okay, what, what was the activity around this portion of the code over the last span of the last year, six months? Is there some things that we can see? And so I'd almost want to take this and not look at something right specific right away, but start to look at some of the different visualizations that we use overall and see what we can find. Cause I don't want to look at one thing and be it being like a, um, our own bias towards the situation being like, Um, Oh, we're self, we're self confirming. just be so right about that. Yeah. And so taking this more as like a research and I would say, I think that this will be an easy topic to bring up in the data science working group. And I'll be happy to do it in the next meeting of being like, Hey, this is happening. Who wants to come and let's do some form of a research set on these, like Matt, whether it be, I kind of group, the vulnerabilities of like a mass exodus um and then yeah like i figuring out i guess my brain is right now going towards max ex exoduses because i'm like still on the redis i'm i'm still on my of brain course is still on redis and then now we have this whole other issue and so but i think that we finally have i say like i feel like there's now enough people who are really interested in looking at this from a data perspective that we can finally like get together to create, to start doing some research and all of us go about looking at the data a little bit differently, which I think is the best case scenario because I'm Yeah. going to go through and look through all of the eight knot visualizations and see what's going on there. And you're going to go through and look through all of the things that you normally do. And I can see Sophia Var. I I'm 
I'm I hate, I'm not gonna throw yeah. it and be like she's gonna do it, but just from the assumptions of who I know as Sophia as a person that she's gonna be really interested in doing this, then she, I would assume that she'll go and look at it, and so then we can be we can set this up as like a research project, get a couple of different examples, all figure out a good way of documenting what we see and see what kind of comes out. I I love that idea. You could probably see on my screen if you're looking at it that. There's nothing we can do right now with regards to this little research endeavor because the repository is disabled. Um, so probably until further notice, but yeah, um, just, yeah. just want to say, Callie, I would love to be a part of that. Uh, if you yeah. wind up doing like even a separate group, I don't know if you would or if it would all be in the working group, but like I, yeah. I imagine we have the tools publicly available through chaos right now to do some of that like research. And I think that would be I feel like we at least get a metric or two out of like what, how this works and we get a model of how to think about those metrics and what they are useful for. And yeah. that's, you know, super yeah. exciting. I think I want to try to yeah, get a group together. We'll probably do like a call for like who's interested and it's probably just going to be a smaller group and we'll kind of all, how I envision mm -hmm. would be all the like, end of, we would be meeting having meetings with the specific goal of working on this. Um, Cause I've been thinking about this a lot, just working towards doing the, um, we're doing a mini summit at OSSNA. And one of the examples, yes. Yay. I'll be Wendy. there. Is that, a, are you going to do it with chaos con? It's, it's right before chaos con. It's like it's on a separate the registration. Of, yeah. So it's a whole thing just around visualizing, um, project health like from like a very like let's teach people how to interpret graphs <laughs> and pick graphs whenever there are so many resources because before i had been doing a lot of workshops or just meetings with people trying to teach them how to make graphs and then i realized that 95 percent of the time that was taking things bef like past people's actual sticking point or use case which was just picking and interpreting graphs and so mm -hmm. that's where that's going to focus in on. And one of the examples that I'm planning on doing for like the section I'm working on is actually the heat map visualizations that have been made in 8 Knot of it being a good example of here's a graph that is very intimidating to people. They may not even understand what a heat map is. How do you see this and start to be like, okay, let me understand a heat map. How do I understand what the data, what are the access points of this? And I'm planning on bringing up examples of max exoduses of projects to be able to see that because it's going to be the most dramatic thing on the heat map graphs that have been created. To And so now that's where my brain is gone because I went and asked our OSPO. I was like, hey, guys, who has examples of max exoduses for I can use for this? And then there was just I got like 20 from one person. And I was like, oh, wow, there's a lot of information here. I wonder I feel like I need uh, I need to do more with this than just an example in a in a conference um, like presentation. Yeah. Okay, I have visualizing. Is that visualizing open source project health? Because I accidentally yes. registered for Us. your session without knowing it was yours. It's ours. Yes. <laughs> You've registered. Yeah. Uh, okay, James. Thanks for joining us. We're out of time. <laughs> Kelly can I fill you in on the. Yeah, I know he's been in here for a while, but. Um, we're out of time, so I'm going to end this meeting on time. And okay. I, I, if uh, anybody comes up with, uh, if you get anybody like stumbles across this XC repo already like being reactivated, uh, let me know and I'll add it to the public instance of Augur. Um, James is raising his hand. So Gary, if you need to take off, I understand that. Um, but James, what do you got? Yeah, this is just a momentary thing. So you know what my deal is with this meeting. Um, I have a stand up at 10 a.m. every day. So I'm going to do my best to be here right after that. But people love talking in that meeting. So if I'm I get like... stuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I was there I for mean... one day and I was about to I was about to go off on people and I don't even work on this project. If that puts anything to <laughs> the meetings are bad. The engineering is fun. So it's a trade off. It's just people keep wanting to like, people keep wanting to make their mark by being the loudest one in the room sometimes. But it's like being, it's a, just, it sounds like a faculty meeting. It sounds terrible. 
<laughs> yeah, it it's less fun. It's less productive, but that's just how, you know, if I'm not here on the hour at 10, I'm, I'm just still in that. And then I'm, tr yeah. I try to be here by the half hour. James, that's how fair. I'm planning on, I think that this was unofficially was going to be my strategy, but punting anything that might specifically pertain to you as much as possible but i'm just going to be using like messaging you asynchronously if things come up that i think are specific towards you and in case you are just sitting there listening to somebody hear themselves talk for 15 minutes and are yeah like online yeah. async av available so i that's kind of i usually how... am async available yeah. So I'm usually just how. looking at Andrilla cringing together. <laughs> like, we just look at each other and we're like, eh, come on. <laughs> um, I would say, I bet, right, if you get time, James, to today, not so not as much, but some of the past meetings, and you'll be able to tell of when Lamy's been wa walking through the... Yeah. That she goes into a lot of it really in detail. And I think that one of our kind of next phase discussions is going to be, I think we need to go and do like a technical audit of eight, not of like what we would need to do from a technical architecture standpoint to get yeah. to that, at least that first step of figuring out, okay, how are we going to go about doing this? Um, yeah. Sounds good. Wait. Sure. 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 And right. to what I've seen so far from her designs are pretty sympathetic to what I know we can do. There's a couple things that I noted last time that are just like we're 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 cooking or we're kind of painting by numbers with Dash. So it's it's harder to have custom behavior even if we'd want it. It's certainly possible, but that just means you know, I don't think we want to bite that off. Um and so I'll I'll just say what can and can't be done easily. Cool. Word. Thank y'all. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everybody. This is a good meeting. All yeah. right. Talk to you later. Catch you all next week. Cheers. See you. Have a good Bye. week. Bye. Cheers. Bye.